Welcome back to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. So let's look at uh, what we need to accomplish for Lesson 1. By now, you should have a copy of the book, the JavaScript and jQuery book by John Duckett. So I'm assuming by this point you've already read Chapter 1. So if you haven't, go back and read Chapter 1 and then come back and watch this video. All right, welcome back. So I'm going to create a new folder because I'm in a new lesson. So on Windows or Mac, go ahead and create a new Lesson 1. From Lesson 0, we created the basic HTML file. So you'll need to get a copy of that. I can right-click Copy from my Lesson 0 and then into my Lesson 1 Paste. So this basic project is what I'm going to start off with because I want to save myself a little bit of time and effort. And I will call this Lesson 01 Practice. Sure, anything we want. So I've got a practice file ready. I'm going to open Visual Code. If I have anything open previously, I'm going to close those files. I'll go up to File Menu, Open Folder, and I'm going to open Lesson 1 folder. So this shows that my Lesson 1 folder is ready. Double click to open Lesson 1 Practice. Here it is. What this looks like if I open it up in my web browser. A basic project. Remember to get used to opening up the inspector, also known as the bugger, also known as the developer's console. Here I'm in Google Chrome. I'll go to the top right corner, Google Chrome Options, More Tools, Developer Tools. Memorize the shortcut, Control-Shift-I or F12 on the keyboard. So I've got my console. My console will help me debug and find my errors, and it will give me great output. So, we're ready to get started. This is our project, and get in the habit of using the, the comment block at the end of the file to fill this stuff in properly, especially for work you're going to be turning in for a grade. So, of course, under your name, you would put in your name, your email. Project. This is Lesson 1. You're going to have a homework, of course. Um, for Lesson 1. This is my Lesson 1 practice description. A look at JavaScript objects. And the date. Either the date that it's due or the date that you worked on it. The next homework assignment is going to be due on September 5th. Uh, title, back on line 5. Lesson 1 practice. And on line 11, we will say that this is JavaScript objects. As you've read in the book, you've seen that um, JavaScript is an object oriented programming language. It represents models of real world concepts as objects. The book also states JavaScript is an interpreted programming language in that it is interpreted at runtime rather than being compiled. If that, all of that still doesn't quite make sense, that's okay. That's what this lesson will be about. So, we're going to write some embedded JavaScript. We've got our script block. My JavaScript goes here. And the book is going to tell you that external JavaScript files are going to be better in the long term, and I agree. But for the purposes of these early assignments, we'll keep it in one simple file. I will give myself a brand new, brand new line 14 so we can start writing our code. And there are some concepts we're not really going to get into just yet for Chapter 1. We're going to get into them much more in Chapter 2 and going forward. But there, at this point, the concepts in one sense are so basic that you can't do very much without getting more advanced. So I will be mentioning a few things that I'm not going to explain in a lot of detail because we will learn what they really mean in chapters 2 and on. So the first thing we'll do is we'll write the JavaScript keyword VAR. We will see later on that this is a variable, which is basically a container. We're about to define a container to hold something. We will see that variables can hold numbers, letters, booleans, etc. And objects. The book goes on to explain the object of a hotel and the object of a car. For our practice, we will create an object of a person. 
So I'll type var space person equals. This is a container. It defines the object of a person. We then initialize the object with some values here. That's the equals sign. We assign values. We assign data to this variable. And we'll type the curly brace, left curly brace, and then the right curly brace. Curly braces are next to the P. So check your keyboard. And then at the end, semicolon, the end of that line. So within these curly braces, we're going to define an object. We're going to define a computer representation of a real world element, for example. I'm going to press enter to break up these curly braces into separate lines just so that it's readable. We've said before that that uh, the language and the interpreter, the web browser, doesn't care if you use multiple spaces, tabs, enters, whatever. This is for us, for readability. So we're about to create a key value pair that defines this person. Sounds complicated, but check out how easy it is. I'm going to type in quotes, double quotes, last name. We will see that when we create variables and other properties, parameters and such, uh, we can use just about any naming conventions, although pay attention in the chapter in the book where it explains in detail our naming conventions. So last name. At the end of that, space colon. I'm going to create a person object that defines me, your instructor. So then in quotes, I'll type my last name. So here I'm saying this object has a property of last name. And the value in this case is campos. At the end of that line, comma, enter. Next I'll define first name, space, colon, and my first name. You, of course, should be writing your last name, your first name, etc. You might say, as you read on the book, most of the lines will end with a semicolon. In this case, I am not ending lines 15 and 16 with semicolons because they're all related to the same object, the same line of code, basically, that I started in line 14. So we'll get used to when we use them, when we don't. But semicolons, most of the time, complete a statement. OK, so I've done a lot of hard work. I need to remember once in a while to save. I'm going to check my result in the web browser. We'll go back to the web browser. I'll refresh it or reload it. Well, at least it says what I wrote here and what I wrote there, but nothing about this new object I created. And it should be obvious because I've created this object, but I haven't done anything with it. The book goes on to say that the book says it in a nice way. I'll say it in a mean way. Computers are dumb. They don't know what you want. They don't know what they want unless you program them with some meaning. So we never programmed, what are we doing with this object? We've simply created an object called person, but we didn't do anything with it. Okay, let's do something very basic with this object. At the end of line 17, at the end of the statement of creating the person object, I'll press enter, a couple of enters just for some space, and we'll write console. This is the console object, dot log, open close parentheses, semicolon. The console object we saw in lesson zero is where we can get some output in the developer's panel in the web browser. The method is log. The command is log. We're going to write a log. We're going to write a comment. We're going to show ourselves something in the console, uh, the console object. In parentheses, well, what do we show in the console? Let's show person. We created the person object. Let's show it in the console. Notice what's cool with an editor like Visuals, Visual Code is that you can select something and it highlights it in different parts of your code. I selected person and it also highlighted back on line 14 wherever else I've used it. So wherever I have the word JavaScript typed and I highlight it, it highlights everywhere in my code. Very useful. I'm going to save my work. I'm going to go back to my browser, reload. 
look at my console here nothing visually yet in the viewport nothing visual yet in the document object but I'm getting something in the console object it says object last name Campos first name Victor hey that's what I wrote that's what we wrote together it says that on your lesson one practice file line 19 this line of code was executed console.log and so it showed the person object in the console if you're curious you can click the little triangle it'll show you more stuff complicated stuff we don't need to get into just yet but there is another view first name last name wait a minute I thought I wrote last name first name that's fine it's gonna show it to us alphabetically in the console here don't worry about it what else defines a person I'm going to back up to line 16, add a comma at the end, and press enter. The syntax here is very important. I'm adding a comma at the end of the line after the quote, not before the quote. If I was writing regular English, I would, of course, write the comma, then the quote, like this. But that's not proper JavaScript, so be careful. We need the comma afterward. And notice the color changed. It was still this sort of uh, beige color, pink color, whatever color that is, salmon color inside the quote, but it's white outside the quote. Make sure that your comma is white, that it's outside the, uh, the quote. And I added a comma at the end of my first name property because I'm adding another property. This one will be age. Notice I'm putting it in quotes. We should put it in quotes because we're defining it as a string. What's a string? We learn about it in lesson two, so don't worry just yet. Space, colon, and we'll put your age. I guess I'll put my real age. Don't tell anyone. 38. I didn't put it in quotes because this is not a string. It's a number. Again, we'll talk about data types in lesson two. What type of data can we store? Can we use? Can we retrieve? One of them is string, one of them is number, we'll get to other ones. Comma. I'll add another property that, that defines this person object. We'll do height. Now, I grew up in the US, so I use feet and inches. If you grew up with the metric system, you can use centimeters, of course. Uh, but I'm going with height in feet, colon, five comma quotes height inch i n inches 10 no final comma on line 19 because it's the last property of this object why that's just the way it is we separate each property with a comma until we get to the final one so we've defi been defining a property on the left side of the colon and its value on the right side these first two are strings. These next three are numbers. They're not in quotes. We will see that the number 38 in quotes is different than the number 38 without quotes. Chapter 2. So I'm going to save that. Reload it. And my output here is simply telling me further more properties of my object. Last name, first name, age, etc. Opening up for more view. It's in alphabetical order, age property, first name property, etc. If you hover over any of these and you notice it says dot height foot dot age, keep that in mind if it sounds familiar from the book. Okay, great. So I'm creating an object. I'm showing it in the console, but because we're developers, we're the only one know any ones that know that we're getting output in the console. We want to use, we want to show that output to the people in the viewport, to regular people in the uh, document object. So let's write some code to display some of this stuff in the actual uh, document. We will see various ways to display this content in the document object. We'll use one of the most simple ways, which we've seen before. Next line, couple of enters. I'll write document dot write open close parentheses semicolon. Document object is this main viewport area dot write is the method we're gonna do something dot log 
did something, it put the person, it displayed the person object in the console. Dot write is going to write something, is going to display something in the document object. Let's try the same thing as before. In the parentheses, I'll make it display person. We've seen in the console output that person is the definition of me or you. So let's display that in the document. Back to the browser, reload. Hmm, object, object. So you see, again, the computer, the interpreter, the web browser didn't quite know what we wanted exactly. We told it, show the person object on screen. And it did. And it said, here it is. There's an object. There it is. Well, again, computers are dumb. Unless we program them to do exactly what we want, they don't know what we want. I want it to show the properties of the object. It doesn't show it to me in a nice, simple way like in the console. But even this isn't really simple because what's this proto stuff about? And that goes on to say some other scary stuff. So I don't want to show any scary developer stuff to the regular user. I simply wanted to show the properties of this object. Okay, going back to my line 24, we have a property called last name. So what I want to do actually, let's change our code. In the parentheses, instead of it saying person, we will say person dot last name. Save it. Run it. And look at that. Instead of it being dumb and saying, here's your object, it says, here's a property of your object, which in this case is last name. All right, if I wanted to say then my first name, do the same thing. Next line, document dot write person dot first name. Notice I have to spell it exactly the same. If I were to write first name with a lowercase n, and I try to see my result, campus undefined, which is true. I do not have a first name property of this object. I have a first name property of this object. The difference is the capital letter N and the lowercase letter N. We will see when we talk about debugging and fixing our code that we have syntax errors and we have logic errors. I have not made any syntax errors yet. I've made a logic error. A syntax error would look like this. If I write document.wrote run, oops, my console is telling me uncaught type error, document.wrote is not a function. That's a syntax error, meaning you're writing the language wrong. You're writing this code incorrectly. That's a syntax error. In, for example, in English, if I were to say, I'm going to the store, that is correct. But if I were to say, I'm store going to, mm, we get the sense, I suppose, but it's grammatically wrong. It's syntactically wrong, wrong syntax. That's what this is telling me. Basically, you wrote the language wrong. That kind of error is relatively easier to fix because right here the browser is telling me, go check your line 24. I don't know what this means. Line 24, whoops. Okay, that should be right. So right is right. Right is correct. No more syntax error. But I still get an error in that my output is undefined. That is a logic error, and those are much more difficult to fix because just by browsing my code here, it might be very difficult for me to see that I missed a capital letter. So with practice, we will avoid those. Save. Results. Campus Victor. Okay, well, again, the computer did exactly what I told it, but in my mind, I wanted to be Campos space Victor. Actually, perhaps I wanted to be Campos comma space Victor, but the computer didn't know that, of course, because I never programmed it to do that. Let's further specify. We will see that when we put some, uh, some write output or some console output, we can uh, see that we can build a string of text. This is concatenation, very fancy term, but it just basically means putting strings together, putting words together. 
And again, this comes more to the forefront in chapter 2 and forward. But for the moment, just, just follow me on this. Let's do this. We're going to say in between last name and first name. We'll do another document.write. So give yourself a new line 25. We will write then quote space end quote. I'm doing double quotes the whole time. I could be using single quotes. That's fine. But I'm in the habit of using double quotes. So double quotes, but there's a space between the double quotes. See right there, there's a space. Okay, what does that mean? What does that do? Now let's see the result and then I'll explain. Did you see the difference? There is now a space between Campos and Victor. Let me go back and comment out the line to show you again if you didn't notice. Double slash, remember, comments one line of code. So I'll comment out, I'll deactivate line 25. Pay attention here, refresh it, no space. So even an empty space is something, even an empty space has a value, literally. The empty space is ASCII code 32. So just because we cannot see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We have put an empty space between my last name and my first name. And then the computer obeys and we have a space. Okay, I will put quote, comma, space, quote. Save, reload, compost comma space victor. Now it's looking nice. Now it's looking human readable. Previously the computer, the interpreter, the web browser was doing everything we diligently told it to do without any thought, without any planning. Now with some more effort it's doing what I envisioned it for it to do. I want to display age, height, and all of that stuff. So we'll say new line document dot write open close parentheses I want to display my age I want it to say the word age and my age and then height and the height I want it to display on the next line under campus comma Victor we've seen through lesson zero HTML doesn't make a new line unless you specify a new line so what we'll do is document.write quotes and then the tag br you should recall that br will break a new line so this will create this will write this will render valid html code using the dot write method of javascript will allow us to write any html code in the document next line document dot write the book will mention that document.write might not be the best way to write your JavaScript, and I agree. But for lesson one, it's fine. And I wanted to say age, colon. Now, this that I'm writing here, age, is not the same age that I wrote up here on line 17. This is simply a string. When I view the result, it displays the word age, a string, a literal. It literally wrote age, so whatever in quotes will be literally written, except that tag of break which actually made the break. Watch, commenting this line out, line 27, running it again. Age is on the same line because we didn't break the line. So, because it's a tag, it gets interpreted, it gets rendered, it becomes a new line. So it shows the word age. I then wanted to display my age in the object. Let's get fancy right here. I don't want to write this on a new line, which I could. We're going to do it this way because we'll be doing this way over and over. In the parentheses, space plus space. We will see in lesson two and beyond that the plus symbol has a different function or a different usage in JavaScript than regular math. In math, if I did uh, 1 plus 1, that would be 2. But in JavaScript, 1 plus 1 could equal 11. 
We'll see why later. But for the moment, the plus basically means we're going to string two things together. Just to show you for the moment, I'll write age, person, dot age. Notice this is all lowercase. Result, age, colon, 38. I pulled the value of 38 out of the property age of the object person. So if I were to go back and I have a birthday next year, and I become 39 years old, and I change my object to 39, the result will be that this will then update to display age 39. I'm changing a property of the object, and then I can use that or access that property however, whenever I want. The whole point of chapter 1, lesson 1, is to have you thinking about objects in JavaScript, which are bundles of information, basically. Did you notice that I did not have a space between age, the colon, and the number? Again, I envision in my mind a space there, but JavaScript doesn't, and it didn't display it. So, if I go back to line 28, age, colon, space, within the quotes, that will then display a space in the document object. And it sounds annoying and nitpicking at the moment, but we'll get used to it and we'll see that it's valuable because we will be able to control this as we want. At this point, I'm going to back up and make myself, give myself a few um, notes. I'm going to back up to line 14 and I'm going to tab this over a little bit. This is completely optional, but I'm tabbing it off to the side here so I can see it. And I'll add double slash, which creates a single line comment following the slashes here. And I'll write, created an object called person with the var keyword. Added a property of last name and gave it the value of campus. And so forth. You can say for 38 added a property of age and gave it a value of 38 a number type we can back up and say here a string type line 22 displayed console output 24 displayed on screen the last name property of the person object. Displayed the value on screen of the last name property of the person object. Displayed on screen a comma and space between last name and first name. Line 27, what did we do there? Displayed a BR or break HTML tag. Line 28, displayed the string age and then the value of the age property of the person object. This is all optional, of course, because the user will not see this. But when you work on your own code or with a team, it's very useful to add comments. OK, let's get fancy. Again, this will make much more sense in Lesson 3 and beyond, but it's important to mention it now. OK, I want to display my my height feet and inches as one unit I want to link these two together so to speak and display that each easily on screen so we'll go back to line 19 and add a comma because we're going to add a new property so I'll press enter actually I'll press enter twice just so that I can view this differently this time I will write in quotes total height colon 
And again, this is kind of uh, pretty fast to get into this, what I'm about to show, but at such a basic level, we can't t talk very much intelligently about JavaScript without getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So we're going to write function, which is a keyword of JavaScript, opening and closing parentheses, and then opening in space, and then opening and closing curly braces. No comma at the end because it's the last property of this object. Actually, this is a this is now a method of the object. So I'm going to back up to line 20 and write a method of my person object. The book mentions in lesson one about objects, properties, methods, and events. It mentioned the car. The car is the object. Its velocity, how fast it's going, is a property. And then the method of accelerating or decelerating is something else that defines a car, the method of accelerating or decelerating the action. And then events, what triggers the acceleration or deceleration. For the moment, before getting too ahead of ourselves, we're going to create a method for this object. It'll make sense in a moment. I'm going to break apart the curly braces into their own line. And then I will create within these curly braces a new variable, a new var, a new container. This container will be called feet inches. This will store the value of feet and inches as one unit. Right now, on lines 18 and 19, they are two different properties. I want to sort of group these two properties together. That'll be feet inches. Feet inches is defined by, equal, is defined by, again, getting ahead of ourselves, but for the moment, just trust me, this dot height feet, height feet comes from the property that we defined previously. And this is a keyword that means search for the height feet of this element that we're working with. This element is currently person. Because we can see we can have various things throughout our hundred lines of code called height feet, but we mean the one of this object. That's what this is. Space plus space quotes, open and close quotes feet dot space. I'm going to have it display the number 5 and the word feet and then the space because then plus I want to display this dot height in these are the inches of my height space plus quotes I n dot and then at the end of that statement semicolon. Hmm, that's interesting. So what we're doing is we're not really adding as in 1 plus 1 is 2. We're adding uh, 1 plus 1 is 11. And that means that we are going to display what height feet is plus the word foot and space plus whatever height inches is plus the word inch. So we're not really adding numbers. We're building a string. We're building a sentence. Let's take a look at this. We haven't done anything with it yet. We've just defined it. But let's take a look in our browser. Reload. Last name, first name, age, height, height in. But if we look in the object, it says that there is a function called total height. But if you hovered over it, you would see function var, blah, 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 what we just wrote. We've developed a method for this object. The result of this I want to return it, I want to display it on screen, I want to use this result. So next line 23 we will write return space feet inches semicolon. We're basically inventing the variable feet inches and then we're returning its value for us to use. So let's use it. Let's go back to our uh, document write section and we will add a new line 34 document dot write same syntax as before we're gonna say you are whatever the height is so 
in quotes because it's a string we'll say you are colon space after the quote space plus so we're going to display the string you are and then we're going to display what the total height is okay so same syntax as before person dot total height the logic of it is that we are then going to display what feet inches is which is returned from the total height function let's see if that worked back to the browser reload it age 38 you are hmm it returned it displayed the contents of the function not the actual calculation and we're also seeing here we forgot to move UR into its own line. Again, the computer is dumb. We didn't tell it what to do. So we'll fix that. And we'll fix this. Why is it showing the function instead of the result of the function? Back to our code, we will say a new line. Let's back up and give ourselves a new line 34. To make myself a little bit, uh, save myself a little effort, I'm going to copy and paste line 32 because that's the line where I created a new blank line. I, I did break. So instead of typing it and maybe typing it wrong, I'll copy and paste line 32 to 34. I know it worked, so I'll just copy and paste it just to see if it worked. There's my result. You are. I wanted it on its own line, so it's on its own line. That's what the break does. But it's still not displaying the result of the calculation, so to speak. It's a method. When we reused console.log, I said this is an object, this is a method. When we used write, object, method. Do you see that the methods have the parentheses? Last name is a property, first name is a property, total height is a method. It's a method because it's defined as a function. It's a set of steps. Dot log is a method, so it has parentheses. Dot write is a method, so it has parentheses. So you should see what I'm getting at here. Total height is a method, so we'll back up to line 35 and we'll add opening and closing parentheses. Person object total height method parentheses console object log method parentheses save it run it result it didn't literally display the code of my function it displayed the return value the result return value feet inches which is a calculation of building height plus the word inches plus the word result you are five foot ten inches if I were to somehow mysteriously grow and I'm 11 inches the result here displays properly because it's an object we can use it and reuse it however we wish and this is the power of JavaScript it's an object oriented programming language in OOP object oriented programming one final bit of notes for us here and we're done we'll say that on line 35 displayed the result of the total height method of the person object backing up here then line 20 a method of my person object is total height function for the moment we'll say concatenation concatenation I believe that's how you spell it concatenation you can look up more information about it or we'll get to it within the book and then return value again if this doesn't quite make sense at the moment we're barely on chapter one don't worry it will make sense and I'll see you on the next video